So here's the big question. How do you sell heavy duty parts in a digital world? That's the question, and this is the place where you're gonna find the answers. My name is Jamie Irvin, and we are live in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to another Jamie Irvin Live. This is the place where we are digging into one question. How do you sell heavy duty parts in a digital world? Today, we're going to talk about social media. Now, as always with live programs, we are really looking forward to hearing from you. So if you are tuning in today and you want to make a comment or ask a question, feel free to do so. We'll include you in the conversation. You know, when I work with my clients, social media, of course, is a big topic of discussion. Traditional marketing, there was nothing like it before. In the past, when you sold heavy duty parts, the marketing department was primarily producing print marketing right? They made catalogs, they made flyers, brochures, specials, business cards, uh, maybe some materials that were going to be promotional in nature to give away, um, things that you would bring to a trade show and, and give to people, things like that. That was, that was traditional marketing and heavy duty parts. And really it was dependent on the salesperson to go and make sales calls and oftentimes they had something that was printed that they could leave behind. And that was pretty much the extent of marketing for your heavy duty parts company. If you were in the independent service channel, or if you were a local parts store, you know, the other kind of marketing that you often would do is, is local directories, right? So people could find you. Uh, maybe you would even go so far as to do some advertising in newspapers. I mean, this was the traditional way. This is what was marketing for decades in the heavy duty parts industry. But now, of course, all that has changed in the last last 15 years. And so as the digital space took over and really disrupted traditional marketing, the emergence of search engine marketing, right, with like things like Google and Yahoo, things like that, uh, social media, became more and more prevalent to the point now where social media is impacting the entire world and is part of influencing the politics of our world, uh, the economics of our world, the social movements of our world. And for good or bad, you know, social media is here to stay. Now, for savvy marketers, using search and, and social media to advertise their company really became a, a, or provided rather an opportunity for companies to reach an audience in a way that, that was never possible before. Always in the past, we had to rely on trade publications, uh, magazines, newspapers, and the distribution was wide. Uh, trade publications was a bit more focused on, on your industry, but still you weren't able to target people specifically. And of course, with social media, that all changed. So what I want to talk about today is, first of all, how does a heavy duty parts company choose which social media channels they should be on? And then how do they decide what content they should make? So first, let's talk about how to choose the social media channel for you or the social media channels, plural. Now, one mistake a lot of people have made over the past uh, few years is they have tried to be on all the platforms. While I always recommend to my clients that they capture the handle that uh, goes along with their company. So you want to have the same social media handle across all your social channels. So that might be a business handle or it might be a personal one for an individual if you're like a sales professional. But it's important to go and make sure that you have captured that handle for every social media channel out there. But that doesn't mean that you should then start to try to publish content on every social media channel out there. The deciding factor in which social media channels you should focus on first is always connected to who your ideal customer is. Now, if you don't know who your ideal customer is, or if you have way too many types of customers, this is going to be really, really difficult for you to make this decision. 
But really, it is important to understand who you are trying to reach because where they are is where you need to be. So for example, uh, I'm a brand ambassador for Diesel Parts. Now, Diesel Parts is uh, their parent company is Diesel Laptops. Diesel Laptops, by and large, built their sales funnel and their rapid growth on the backs of two things, Google Search and Facebook groups. And so they found out that their ideal customer, which was independent repair technicians, spent a lot of time in Facebook groups talking about technical things. And diagnostics became a big part of the subject in a lot of these Facebook groups. And so Facebook was a natural place for diesel laptops who sells diagnostic tools to be. So where are your ideal customers? You know, if you're selling heavy duty parts, where do the fleet maintenance managers spend their time online? Where do the independent repair shop owners and technicians who buy parts at an independent repair shop, where do they spend time online? Where does the owner operator spend their time? Where does the mobile repair technician or mechanic spend their time? That is the guide that you should use to help you decide which social channels you should be on. Now, another thing that I see people do wrong is they try you know, even if they go through this exercise and they, let's say, narrow it down to three different social channels, they try to do all three at once. That can often be a mistake because you never get good at any one of them. So I always recommend find the one that represents the greatest opportunity where the most, where, where most of your ideal customers are. Start with that social channel and dominate there first. Then you can expand. I did this with my brand. I started on LinkedIn. This is where the people that I wanted to report my podcast that airs every Monday and my live program that I do for the heavy duty parts report every Friday, LinkedIn was the place I started. But recently I have uh, made the decision to incorporate Facebook and Instagram because it is time now for me to expand. But I spent almost two years just focused on LinkedIn to start with. Now, YouTube is something that is kind of weird because it's sort of a social channel, but it's also a video hosting place. So I would say that if you're going to, let's say, start with LinkedIn, I'm not saying that's what you should do. Maybe Facebook is where you should start, but wherever you start, wherever you host your videos, um, make sure that you're using YouTube as well. Uh, but you, again, you can just host them and then put those YouTube videos on your website. And maybe that's the extent of your use of YouTube for right now. So the trajectory for me was LinkedIn first. I started using YouTube to host the videos and then I moved to Facebook and Instagram. I have not spent a lot of time and effort, if really uh, any at all, on Twitter, on Pinterest, or on any of the other social channels out there. Uh, TikTok is one that I get asked about a lot. You know, should we be on TikTok? And I always start with, well, is that where your ideal customers are? And if they are, then yes, you should consider it. But is TikTok the place you should start and focus on first? Maybe, maybe not. But this idea of focus is really important. I learned a long time ago, a great acronym. So the acronym is FOCUS and it stands for follow one course until success. So with social media, figure out where your ideal customers spend the most time, pick the top social channel and focus there first. Learn how to use that channel. Get really good at being there first. Then you can think about expanding. Now, the next question logically is, well, what content should I put on my social channels? Well, the content strategy needs to be focused on your ideal customer. And I often recommend to my clients, the best place to start is to look at your customer service department or your sales department that who are fielding customer service issues. The, it, it isn't always just problems, but it's just general questions asked by your ideal customer. That is where the beginnings, the foundation of your content strategy can start. You can look at all of these common questions that come up. You can address them. 
make content to answer those questions, put them on social media, and also put this kind of content on your website so that people, when they go to your website, they can look at this library of content in one place. And that's why YouTube is so important. And that's why blog articles are so important because it allows you to take that YouTube video that you've made, embed it in a blog article right on your website and this content of library answering all of your customers, you know, your best customers, your ideal customers, most common questions. That's where that content should be. Now, what other kinds of content should be on social media? Well, I think it's really important to avoid too many buy from me type posts. I see this a lot. Companies will get on LinkedIn, they'll get on Facebook, they'll get on other social channels. And every post is like this product, buy this product, buy this product, buy this product. Just ask yourself when you're on social, if you use it at all, uh, is that what you would want? Is that the kind of engaging content that would get you to be interested in a brand? Well, there's room for it from time to time, but it's certainly not something that should be a dominant feature on your social. Social to me is about being social and engaging in a conversation, a two-way conversation with your ideal customers. It's also about providing a service of some kind. So that can be education. It can be relevant information. It can be entertainment. Uh, some people call it edutainment, which is a combination of education, but put in an engaging way that kind of turns into a little bit of entertainment as well. So you definitely have to find your voice. You have to find your brand identity. What does your brand sound like? What does it look like on screen? And, and that has to come through. So it has to be real. It has to be authentic. But you can focus on not only the questions that your ideal customers have, but you can also focus on your big why for being in business. You can focus on issues uh, related to the industry. You can supply people with relevant and, and, and information that maybe they have a hard time finding. Uh, one of the big problems that I see a lot of people get into is they kind of underestimate the value of bringing together information into one central place. Think about it. Everybody's busy. If I don't have to go and look at six different websites to get the information I need, I can just go to your site or your social channel. Don't you think that's going to bring me back more and more and more? And the most important thing to remember with the content is it needs to be, some, be content that people want to consume, that your ideal customers enjoy consuming, and that allows you to get to know them and for them to get to know you. When your salespeople then go into a prospect or even an existing customer that you would like them to buy more from you, if you do this consistently over a long enough period of time, you're going to see that your sales cycle could actually start to shrink. And getting in with prospects might happen a little easier and a little faster because people have gotten to know you over time. They started to like and trust your brand. They started to use your content to help them with their job, to help them with, with their success. And when it comes time to have a meeting with you, they're going to be much more likely to do so. So by way of review, what social channel should you be on? Wherever your ideal customer is. What kind of content should you make? Content that is considered valuable by your ideal customer. And it should be a variety of content that allows them to get to know you and answers questions or provides important information to help your ideal customer with their goals. This is where you should start. If you would like to uh, get a little bit of help with this, by all means, uh, you can message me directly or you can send me an email, jamie at heavydutypartsreport.com. That's the two best ways of getting in touch with me. And I would be happy to sit down with your company and help you with your overall strategy, not just from a perspective of like which social channels you should use, but also from a perspective of how to develop the content. This is one of the areas of expertise for me. And so if this is something that will uh, be beneficial to you, 
go ahead and reach out to me directly. You know, by way of one last little tip, it is good to look at what other people are doing because you do want to see what the trends are, but don't try to copy what someone else is doing. You know, be willing to try new things. Be bold in you in the execution of your strategy and the delivering of your uh, the publishing of your content, because you know that consistency and trying new things and being willing to to be real with people, it goes a long way. And people will see this, this arc, this, this, you know, journey that you're on and it will draw the kinds of people that you want to do business to you. And actually it has a way of kind of repelling the kinds of people you don't want to do business with. So be bold, be willing to try new things, keep an eye on competition, keep an eye on trends, keep an eye on things that are happening in other industries and, and, but don't try to be a copycat, just be authentic, stick to who you are as a person, as a company and get that message out there. And I think you're going to find that social media is a powerful tool if used correctly. Now, over the next few weeks, we are going to focus in on several of the different types of social channels. And we're going to give you more in-depth strategies on how to use those specific channels. So next week, tune in to learn about LinkedIn, the B2B social media channel that I think most heavy duty parts companies should be leveraging. And we're going to talk exactly how to do that. Now, just before we go, I see a comment came in. Brian here says, definitely, let's take a look here. Definitely great broad coverage of your subject today. Definitely understand that your heavy duty market is not going to absorb the same clientele and listening and social media that you would with the automotive and light duty marketing. That is such a good point, Brian. Thank you so much for uh, commenting. I'm just going to bring this down. Uh, even in similar industries, the you do have to adapt it to your industry, your ideal customer, what they're facing. And so looking at what's happening in automotive, it can be good for getting some ideas about what to do, but you got to stick to your lane, which is in our case, heavy duty parts. Let's see what else Brian had to say here. Uh, TikTok works for the automotive and light duty, but heavy duty is going to be LinkedIn. And you're fortunate to have a social media attachment with your website. That's probably just as good, if not better than anything that's out there with your own uh, profile. So Brian, you know what? I, I agree with you. It depends on the trends. And you know, one thing about something like TikTok, which trends definitely to a younger audience. Um, I, I think that as digital natives start to take over more decision-making, uh, roles within heavy duty, we're going to see a real trend towards some of these different, um, social channels. So channels that at one time, maybe, you know, really for quote unquote, the young people, maybe the very thing that is required in the future. And I think that's why you have to be so adaptable in your content development. You know, that's why you got to always be trying new things. That's why you've got to be willing to be flexible. You want to be consistent, but you also want to be flexible because you have to go wherever your ideal customer is. Brian, thank you so much for commenting and participating in today's live broadcast. Again, if you'd like some help with this, please reach out to me. Message me on whatever social channel you're watching this on because we are broadcasting on LinkedIn, Facebook, and on YouTube. Or send me an email direct, jamie at heavydutypartsreport.com. I would be happy to sit down with your heavy duty company and talk about your strategy and the content that you could be making. And I would be happy to help you in the development of that and the execution of that strategy and see what we can do with your content strategy using social media channels. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And we will talk to you next week where we're going to go deep on LinkedIn as Brian brought out. LinkedIn is definitely one of the most powerful B2B places to spend time on social. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.